understand where the finish line is or or how capitalism really is fulfilled how human experiences are really that are valued are really actually connected to anything of value um, outside of monetary this 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 uh, total construct that we dubbed one day this rock is worth more than this rock and this metal is worth more than this metal and we just made it all up and uh, you know bronze is just as, as shiny as gold Congratulations and welcome back. If you've been following along, then you too have been experiencing more toned arms, a more defined stomach, wider hips, stronger legs, a fuller booty, and a more flexible back. Congratulations and keep up the good work. Some witches feel that there's not even a belief in when they get called demon worshippers or, or um, satanic worshippers, which some of them are. Um, some of them are like, what devil? Because they don't even recognize that that's a thing. They go, you mean that god that, that you guys ripped off and turned into this so that you could kill us all and take our property? All right, now going into this. What is the crux of this hypervigilancy against witches? Sexism, directly. First and foremost, sexism. An old man um, has sex with 20 year old uh, Thai women, that it's okay because in their culture, sex is not shunned and using their bodies is not shunned, and so it's okay. Okay, my question to all of you it was the same question across the board. If you take out the X factor, whether it's drugs or re replaying their trauma, if they've been victimized in certain sexual ways and are replaying it, or um, or money, would they still do it? And the answer, 99% of the time, is no. No, the little girls don't, you know, dream about becoming online hookers or or for drug hookers when they that's not the reality of of what we all think is cool um it's just that people get in situations where they no longer care about themselves where most likely somebody in the world made them feel like they were their sexuality or they were worth nothing more than their body what the fuck by Tara Jones, 2015. In the fire of the moon's eye, I despise you. And I laugh that you'd ever shoot for such a close friend of mine. And in the cackle misted debauchery of a dimly lit firecracker, I watched my dreams fizzle and fade, crying slowly with their bodies, painting themselves against the blackboard of a slated midnight lesson. To know a moonrise is a good feeling. To know you have forgotten what the fuck I'm talking about is a better one. You left, venturing a kiss from such a strange mistress whose howl both scared you and allured you. She turned you on. I know her power well, and so it is in her pale eye that I forgive you. For you know not what you've lost, trying to steal light so close to a jury of stars and sun. What the Fuck by Tara Jones Love and Other Drugs and Bob Ross, a blog by Tara Jones what is love? Can we make it work? Making love work. Love and work seem contradictory, like the pairing was stuck together by fridge magnets, by some drunken co-ed looking for a clever way to leave her mark. But sometimes love requires it to keep afloat. Work, not alcohol. Though I'm sure some couples will beg to differ. When your child is found to have a diagnosis if this happens this is not a stagnant positioning 
there's always room for change, improvement, uh, and and there are ways that you can help aid your child in that recovery or that stability effort. So it does not mean that all is lost. Uh, I'd like to point out to you that Eckhart Tolle, one of the great minds of spirituality today, talks about that even in the event that you find the diagnoses, you are not your diagnoses. You are you. You have a diagnosis, but you are not that diagnosis.